Bjorn Ironside and his Viking fleet have arrived in Italy, ready to reap and raid until they are full. And we have a great battle here today, guys. We are recreating the battle of uh, Luna, so the Viking sa siege of Luna, I should say. And um, this is in 860 AD. We have a vast uh, Viking army here, a huge Viking army, and uh, they are facing a... Uh, well, we have the we have the Romans here today, the Byzantines, but uh, they're kind of representing like the Italian defenders. Um, this is we are playing with the 642 AD mod for Attila again, uh, because you guys really really enjoyed the last uh, Viking siege that we did. We did the Viking siege of Paris. I'll leave a link to that if you uh, haven't checked that one out. With uh, obviously like the famous Ragnar Lothbrok uh, attack on Paris. So we're doing a uh, another one, another Viking siege, and this is uh, with Bjorn Ironside, Ragnar's son. And uh, yeah, his attack into the Mediterranean and uh, onto the city of Luna. He, believing this was Rome, he attacked this. Uh, believing this was Rome, and uh, because he was such staunch defenses here at Luna, uh, he was unable to continue his campaign in uh, the Mediterranean. He did win in history, um, but uh, yeah, it was such heavy losses. Believing it was Rome, and that he sacked Rome, he returned to Scandinavia, uh, very rich and uh, and wealthy. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we have a bit of a sally to start with. We have the uh, the uh, cataphracts uh, from the uh, Byzantine Empire charging out here, going for the Viking uh, infantry. They're trying to set up, trying to block their charge. And here they come up this hill. And they are going to knock down a lot of these swords here. They're going to get some nice charges. There's another one up here. And these guys are going to be supported by uh, pikes here going in. Some Viking pikes coming in. But yes, this is a, uh, in history, a uh, victory for the... Uh, for the Vikings, but we're going to see whether the history can be recreated today. And uh, if you're enjoying uh, seeing like sort of historical battles and including seeing a lot of these like Viking sort of scenarios, then do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show you support. As always, very much appreciated. You see these cataphracts here getting chopped down, unfortunately, and they are all dead. And they're being roused pretty quickly. They were trying to go for our uh, catapults up here, I think, that uh, the Vikings uh, were setting up to bombard onto these positions. Unfortunately, again, we couldn't use, like, ships to just come around here and land. It would have been so cool. Um, but, yeah, we are playing, like, on a really, really uh, cool, like, map. I'll leave it in the uh, description. It's called Portus uh, Vallea. So the way we're going to get across is just to cross these, like, uh, this, like, these land bridges here almost. There are, like, this is a shallow part of the river, and we can cross here uh, and over here as well. So, uh, yeah, this is a really, really close one as well. So I definitely... Uh, Stick around to see how this one ends. It's very, very exciting. And if you're enjoying, uh, not if you're enjoying, obviously, already talked about that. Um, if you're wanting to get involved in some scenario battles, then uh, join the uh, Discord. The link is down below in the description, as always. And uh, always more than welcome to have you guys along to come and play some Total War. Whether it's just to play some scenarios, or just to play some random battles, or just to uh, chat and uh, like get to know uh, some other Total War fans. Very, uh, like... Always happy to have you there, basically, what I'm trying to say. God, words are hard today. Struggling to think of any, it would seem. But I can tell you one thing. I am flabbergasted by these uh, units. I love this unit. This is called, like, the Tagma Pelicafroi or something. It's like a, a shock unit. That's awesome. A shock unit with shields. They are really, really nasty. I would not want to face them. But the first Viking wave is coming across. We have some, uh, some heavy infantry here. Some heavy melees. They're coming across. They're already pretty tired trying to go through this river. But they're looking at magnificent as always. And these men will fight hard for Bjorn Ironside. Son of Ragnar Lothbrok. But yeah, in history, um, the uh, attack on Luna was uh, obviously like... Uh, the attack in like, Vikings on Paris. Like the bit when Ragnar like uh, gets out of the uh, coffin and stuff like that. And uh, like takes the walls. Uh, like that way. Obviously, I'm sorry for spoiling if you've not seen Vikings. But that's uh, in like series three or four. Uh, Ragnar attacks Paris and like he uses a uh, his sneaky ways to basically uh, to get into the Paris. That is inspired from history, and uh, that's what Bjorn Ironside does to get into Luna. Uh, to because they were struggling to take uh, Luna by force, he uh, believes he pretends that he's on his deathbed, and uh, he gets. Uh, well, basically put in a coffin and led into the city to uh, have like a Christian mass. And he then leaps out of the coffin and uh, then 
opens the gates for his Viking army to then come in and take the city. So yeah, it's the, like that action that is uh, in Vikings is inspired from history, but they just use it on a different city. Um, and you can see, like, look at these units anyway. Going back to the battle, you can see that these units are so beat. You know, this is like, I know that some of these were charged by cavalry, but we are taking so many losses from the towers just getting shot. Like, look at that poor man just dying there. Um, from these towers, these are really, really annoying. We have destroyed one here, but we need to destroy a few more. And the Romans, they're set up, and they have a lot of defenses. You can see more of these, uh, these nasty axe units here. And they're throwing javis all the way at these, uh, this axe unit, uh, the sword unit, sorry. Already, like, so beaten up, and they're getting more, like, javis thrown to them. Look at them, ready. Throw your javis, men! Look at that unit, it's already nearly dead before he's even going to get into combat. It's got 63 men left. It's going to break before he gets there. But they do not care. They will fight and die to go to Valhalla. Oh my gosh, this unit is getting gunned down. It really is. And there they go, they're going in. Fight and die for Valhalla. For the gods. Yeah, they're having a rough time. There's some more swords coming in here, getting a bit of a flank going on. Look at them walking up. I think they're in shield wall. I think that's why. I think they were trying to throw javis there and they just didn't manage it. They are now in combat. The Romans are more elite, but there are less of them. That's what I'd say. Yeah, I'd say at this point in history, probably like Italy is probably being occupied by the Langobards. Uh, Langobards? Uh, the Lombards. Lang Langobards are definitely not there. Um. The Lombards, uh, and uh, part of the Kingdom of Lombardy at this point. Not the Romans, but uh, Byzantines are still do have their influence in Italy at this point. Just not in not in Luna, or in, and certainly not in Rome. Certainly not in 860 AD. Fighting on hard here. We are actually losing this choke point. These units are so beaten up, but the second wave is arriving. We have the second wave of Vikings arriving, and there are plenty more to arrive still. Plenty, plenty more. And they are starting their assault on the other side as well. There are certainly less uh, shock in this side, so they may have a bit of an easy time. They're fighting some uh, scooter toy, and uh, they've got like all sorts of spears here. Got a lot of balistari. These guys are really, really nasty. Some of the Vikings lacking is archers. See these crossbows are already uh, loosing off some shots at some of these uh, swords here. They need to get in. You can see the Vikings already storming in. Going up to the Scooter Toy in Shield Wall. Are these, are these Scooter Toy? No, Ra Romanoi Stra Stratoy. These are cohorts over here. These are awesome as well. But yeah, I've been watching... Uh, since we're back in lockdown in the UK, I've been watching a lot of Vikings at the moment. I've not actually seen it all myself. And uh, I've been binging it. So uh, I've had a real hankering to do some like Viking-inspired scenarios and uh, I kind of was reading up on Bjorn's history and uh, in reality like his history in reality not in the show and uh, yeah he goes on to like sack Luna I don't know if he does in the show not quite got there but uh, yeah he certainly certainly has some action in history sacking some Italian cities most notably Pisa they are actually winning here though the Vikings even though they're like look at this 70 of them against 135, they are winning decisively. Even with the tower support, the uh, Romans cannot win that. Might be changing in a moment with all the, the archers coming in. Here again, still winning. The shock infantry on that side shows how strong it is. It's nasty. It really is. We are, have got a little flank going on around here, though. You can see that we are flanking around because we found a way in and there is no, uh, like, troops defending here. And we are in amongst the archers. And these guys are getting butchered now for all the kills that they've got on our Viking kin. going to get cut down. Oh god, these poor archers. There are now some more shot coming up. More of these uh, Tagma uh, Pelophori, or how you would say them. The axe unit. And they're getting involved. And this unit is nasty. As you've already seen. They best our swords quite easily. But we have plenty of shock to come up. Over on this side, we are starting to win in this area as well. This is like taking three... This is like the second or third wave going in to destroy this one uh, axe unit. There are so many bodies under here, many of them Viking. Right. 
And we've got also a little flank going on around here. We are trying to stretch their army out as long as possible. You can see they're facing Varangian Guard here. Got some uh, ex-Vikings fighting against the Vikings. These are Rus Vikings, I guess. That's where most of the Varangians come from. Look awesome as well. And you can see we're already breaking them over here, which is a really good sign. We've got a little flank going on here. Uh, Scooter Toy breaking. They have some more Scooter Toy ready, but they're not sending them in just yet. You might want to think about it soon. Otherwise, Vikings will break through. Look at this, though. These poor, poor Scooter Toy getting cut down. The archers are desperately trying to slow down these Vikings, but it's not enough. And they're in over here as well. Making a lot of moves. Optima Toy in here. Some better swords now coming in. Support against the Vikings. A bit more heavy infantry. This, this mod is great though. I definitely recommend getting it if you haven't uh, tried it out. Definitely worth a try. And you can see we've got more Scooter Toy coming in. Slowing down these, uh, these Vikings. They've broken the first line. Now comes in the second line. Gonna need some more infantry coming in, but I mean they are actually pretty running low, pretty low are the uh, the Vikings on this side. They are now saying in their shock. These shock are really nasty, and they are also triple gold chevron. These are some huskals. But watch them go to combat. In they go with their big double-handed axes. They are going to be ripping these Romans to shreds. Oh god, you can already see lots of them dying here. Poor Romans, they're already breaking. Oh no, they're not. Yeah, they are. Those spears broke just like that. I don't know how fresh they were. They're now going into cohorts, those Vikings. Making a lot of headway over there. Over on this side, we're still struggling to break through. Um, we're actually being held by, by cavalry here. This is a Clipinorium cavalry. It's uh, trying to break through. And they're trying to go after. We can see they actually are breaking us here. And they've got the archers here that they're going after. Oh no, these are their archers, sorry. Uh, but they have actually broken. Yeah, they've done a lot of damage here. I'm not sending in more shock. Got some like Viking band going in. These guys are pretty good. They're like a shock infantry unit with a small spear, a uh, small shield. Sorry. Oh, brutal! How do you stab that man and behead him with a with an axe like that? I do not know. But Angians coming in again. Gosh, but we are starting to make some headway. I am now sending in my pikes, my only pike unit I brought. I'm gonna try and even if it doesn't get many kills, it's gonna just force these guys back. They actually have pikes ready and set up as well. Like, look at this. It's pike after line, pike line after pike line. Just bloody street fighting though. Look at this. You can see the pikes are starting to get in. You can see the big spears being waved about. And there's so many Vikings pressed into this street down here. Look at all these Vikings. You see the Romans up here fighting on. It's awesome. We are starting to break through here, though. You can see we've got some Viking bands surrounding these Vrangians. Also help, being helped by some Huskals here. So we've got some uh, Huskals fighting the Vrangians. Both two-handed uh, axe units. I can't imagine there's much blocking going on here. Just a lot of swinging and a lot of beheading. Oh, my gosh. You can see a lot of heads flying. There you go. We're trying to take these points because uh, there are three points in this uh, in this map that we can take. If we can take them all, that's a huge, huge win there for us. So you can see that we're tr we are slowly taking this point. We've just broken that Varangian unit. We're going to probably kill these uh, crossbows off, these elite Ballastari. We're burning the city. This is what you do as a Viking. You burn. You raid. And you do a lot of other nasty stuff. We're breaking that uh, action unit there. We're starting to make some headway on this side. You can see, look at all this shock coming in. Just an absolute horde of Vikings. And this is the real push here. You see, they've got lots more cavalry and stuff trying to get back. Set up. And the Vikings are going in. For Valhalla. For Odin. He is the true god. As is Thor. 
and Loki and all the other ones. I don't know all the <laughs> don't know all the gods for the Romans. Not for the Romans, for the uh, Vikings. There are many. They're actually starting to run a bit of a like a bit of frustration here. Are the uh, Vikings on this side? They've had a lot of early uh, like success, and now they are starting to like struggle. These uh, Huskars here are being forced back. There's a solid Roman force here forcing these guys back. And uh, you got some more swords here being forced back. We got some javies coming up. This could be really good. They could get some good kills. You see, look at this uh, sword unit here getting shot in the back by these archers at point blank range. Poor, poor units. These uh, skirmishers need to be careful. They don't get caught by these uh, axes here. And you can see there are more Vikings coming across from this uh, this this point here. They're coming across and they're going to come and try and get involved in this fight here. But uh, yeah, so they're making a big push over on this flank. Big, big pushes here. You can see they're trying to defend this point desperately now. We've got some uh, Vikings coming up. And in they go. They're going after these uh, these axes. There's so many of these axes unit as well. It's so annoying, this Tagma unit. Really hard to kill. And there's so many of them. But we're now setting up even more shock. We need those pikes wherever they are, and the pikes need to go. And we're actually pinning down this cavalry unit as well with shock and also with spears. So we're just going to try and route this. This cavalry, they have no place inside the city. They should be out riding in the green fields. And here they are, getting cut down in close combat. Not where they want to be fighting at all. But you can see the Romans have still got a good like base of operations over here. So they've got a lot of spears, got pikes still. A lot of archers, a lot of archers without ammo though. More pikes. But they have caught the uh, Romans here. I mean, these uh, these uh, skirmishes are in combat. They need to get out of combat. We've got more Vikings here coming around. They're going to try and help deal with these uh, these uh, Romans. But they're getting focused down by arrows. You can see. I presume this is like crossbows. Yeah, this was really annoying. That to be fair, that the crossbows can just fire like this and fire directly up into the air and uh, and like then fire down. I really like that in like Rise of Mortar and stuff like that. They've sorted that out. Like you need like a direct line of sight. If you're going to tell a vanilla, you can just fire up and into the air with a crossbow, which is not very, not very true. With a crossbow, you uh, have to have a good line of sight. You can see we've broken through here, and we're going to be able to surround these units with the tiny little units we have left. Like, these units fight to the death, quite literally. Uh, Pikes over here losing. They're getting focused down here. Real shame. But they are, but with a shock infantry support, they may be able to beat this Optima toy. Look at all the dead on the ground. This has certainly been a costly siege already for the uh, Vikings. They're actually uh, very, very close now in numbers, and that probably favours the Romans at this point. At the, at earlier, the v Romans were actually uh, had superior troops, but we had actually closed the gap, and we are actually now slightly in the advantage, but barely. But the Romans have got some really strong positions, and it's going to be hard to break through. So we've had to use our having to use our brains a bit to see how we're going to do this. Uh, I'm actually firing in artillery, trying to hit the pikes here, trying to force these uh, these pikes back and look. I'm getting some nice hits on these pikes in the uh, armored Sagittari and all sorts here. They sent down some archers. Uh, we were quite happy to kill them. Armored Sagittari getting themselves killed. Here come the artillery shots in again. You see the scooter toy setting up. These guys are just looking very nasty. More archers coming in. Here come the scooter toy. They're going to come down this hill. And we're going to quite happily fight them here. You can see that the archers are trying to go after the, our, our skirmishers. And I was like, that's not happening. So I sent in my general. To be fair, I think it's just like probably got a lot of friendly fire there. Possibly, but who knows. But um, this general is a really, really good unit. And he's silver chevron, so uh, that's always a bonus. We've got a lot of shock around here as well. It's just one in a fight here. And they're now able to go around. And they could go after, like, through this gap here in the line if they wanted to. But look at that hit. This hit was insane. It just took out half the pike unit. It's an insanely good shot. I didn't even realize how good this was. Look at all those bodies. Burnt to a crisp. And yeah, that unit just gone from like a fresh to almost half strength, that pike unit. But over here, you can see that the uh, Vikings are basically finished. They are 
Uh, they, they, they did a good job, though. They put a lot of distraction. We are now making a push in here and uh, having a hard time, but we, we could do this still. Viking numbers are uh, looking pretty even again, though. That's the problem. Now the general's in here. It's heavily armored unit. Shame we can't bring the spam this general unit out because it's a really good unit. And it looks very Viking-like. I mean, most of our units look very Viking-like because they are Viking factions. But this one especially, like, everyone's got a uniform shield. I know you necessarily wouldn't, but I feel like if you were part of, like, a, a warlord's, like, I don't even want to say tribe or clan. I don't know what they'll call it. Maybe just uh, Yaldum. You'd all have the same sort of uh, shield, same color shield. Oh, some nasty volumes are flying. Look at that scooter toy. Just jabbing at point blank range. And the general just died. I think that's this general here. Yeah, he's actually uh, wavering and he's broken. Wow, it's 69 many breaks. And yeah, I love this. So they throw like a little uh, like dart instead. They don't throw a jab. They throw like a dart. They've broken that unit there. And uh, yeah, that's basically uh, that Viking army out of men. We've got some more Huskars coming around here. But these are uh, a different army. And yeah, my axes kept desperately wanting to charge into the pikes here. Don't know why. I had the pike like them set up and they was jabbing, but now yeah, they're getting like shot at constantly. You see the uh, city is still on fire, which is great. We have a uh, cavalry going in here. They're actually trying to break my uh, spears, but the spears surely will beat the cavalry here in combat. Apparently not. Spears and shield wall, I would thought would have both been these guys, but maybe not. Scoots toy, fighting to the uh, death. For the Roman Empire, even though the Roman Empire's not here. For the Italian, uh, for this men, for the people of Luna, I guess I'd say. For the people of Luna. But yeah, so at this point, I realized that we were in a pretty rough position. It was, look, we're now actually uh, in the negative in how many men we have. Like, we have 200 less men. So I was like, right, we need to do some big brain plays here. So I sent these two units around here, you can see, and they are going to go and capture this point, which I was pretty sure, and it is, undefended. So uh, I'm going to try and take it, and I'm going to take it, and that should start the ticking timer for us uh, to get a like a second victory point. We only need two of the three to start a timer off. Don't need all three to win, like to uh, set the timer off and win. You can see over here we're like struggling to take this point, and you can't go up this slope. I I found out. So like the slopes just here is aesthetics. You can't actually go through it. You can see all the Vikings dying, running on these pikes here. So sad. And I've got my elite general in here now. So it's a real shame. We've got lots more stuff over here. We've got pikes. We've got all sorts. Like this cavalry was causing a lot of problems. And we've got another really good hit here with the artillery burning into the center of this unit. More men dying from artillery shots. The banner carrier quivering in fear. But the Vikings, yeah, look at this. We just can't get up. But they are now falling back. They're going to allow... The axes to fight on alone, and I was quite happy with this. I was like, send up the uh, send up the Vikings, let them go in. Look at that Roman down there. Ugh. Rip and piece of this guy. F in the chat, please. Another really good hit again. I think hitting these uh, these pikes. That was not. That was a really good hit there though by their artillery. I think that must be theirs. Well, that might be friendly fire. I do not know, but that was a really good hit by something. I think it might have been a friendly fire because their artillery is all the way over here. And that can't fire for some reason. But yeah, we got like, yeah, my axe has kind of got caught out here. I think I just got jabbed to pieces or shot to pieces. I was not paying attention. I was be desperately trying to do what I'm doing over here. And you can see I'm now capturing the point with these Viking band here. But they're sending their general back, Palatina Guards, and we've got to hold. I think I'm in shield wall, though it doesn't look it. I am in shield wall. I'm going to hold the line here. And you get, we're going to go in and stop these Palatina Guard, which look very much like Optima Toy to me. But uh, hopefully we can hold them in place. And you see I've got another unit ready. If it needs to go in, hold this line. More of the city is burning, which is great. Just keep the city burning. How much of the city is actually burnt? Damage 100% apparently. Uh, no effects to the defender though. Yeah, we even burnt the Colosseum. Look at that. Burn this to a crisp. So there's no damage to morale, it seems, in this game. That was unfortunate. But yeah, the general is actually losing and he's being forced back. They've got a weak unit of spears in here. 
doing their bit. It's all of a sudden got very bright here. I don't know why. Did the sun just come out? It's already been out anyway. We can see more cavalry coming around. They're sending their generals back to come and deal with this Magister Militum here. They're coming around. They'll probably flank around here. And then they can rear charge all these axes. And maybe even capture the point. But it's going to be very close. It is only 100, like, four seconds left. Like, if they're going to do anything about it. We are basically just a massive blob here of what remains of our Vikings. We're just going after stuff. Mainly they are just down to uh, crossbows and stuff at this point. So it's very, very close to see who's going to win. We have mostly mainline infantry left. They only have pikes. So if we can just get rid of their pikes, then it's just archers to kill. And that's fine. I mean, it's very close to numbers. It's 900 against 1400. They have, like, like I said, mainly pikes left. So we only have to flank around them. They are sending up their pikes now. There's 116 men here. Trying to stop these Vikings. They're not really set up properly, I, w I wouldn't say. So, I mean, they could definitely do a slight like, moving. And these uh, Vikings, they need to be careful. They don't just get focused on. There's still lots of uh, crossbows with ammo. Over on this side, having a pretty rough time. I'm actually having to turn this unit around just to protect this unit so it doesn't get rear charged. They should be attacking uh, the Magister Militum. Don't know why they're not. Uh, maybe I was microing over on this side. I may have been... Oh, yeah. I think it's because these... Uh, my general here. In a bit of a sticky position. He's actually killing a lot of... Uh, just breaking shock infantry, which is always good. He needs to go into these archers that are just there. But my spears are breaking. It's a rough sign. These spears have gone through a lot. They've been in the fight since the very beginning. Or nearly at the very beginning, anyway. And there you go, my... Uh, my general's in there, but the pikes are now for, uh, attacking him on the flank. They need to be careful. We need to break through this armor to Sagittari so we can get away from these pikes. Otherwise, we could get sandwiched. They are wavering them now. And there you go. Um, yeah, I wasn't even paying attention like to what was going on. But yeah, we held on to the point. Uh, and uh, we took the city. So, I mean, I could probably get over there in time. But yeah, we got over there. And uh, we took the point. So, Luna we was taken by uh, Bjorn Ironside. Like in history, you can see we still hold the point. Still have Vikings here doing their bit. Um, but yeah, so it, like in history, Luna was taken. Bjorn Ironside raids it and takes it for himself. That is kind of what we said um, would happen if victory happened for us. So yeah, we did it a bit sneakily as well. We uh, we had to ca capture the point. A bit like Bjorn had to spring from the grave. We had to spring into action and take the points. But yeah, they had lots of chances that they could have really taken the other like point that we'd taken. They just didn't go and like clock on and take it. Um... So that was a, like a missed opportunity for them. But yeah, well done to uh, all the uh, Viking players and to all the Roman players as well. They did a very, very good job, all of us. It was a very close run thing. I was playing as uh, Denmark here. Um, my general getting 116 kills. Like my sword's 127, the best one. They did not a lot of damage. This faction is okay, but it's not amazing compared to the one that um, my two allies were playing. My Viking band getting 134. Uh, my cavalry getting 22. It definitely felt like it got more, but I don't think they get the kills of like the fire. Um, like kills them they only get the kills for the direct kills but uh yes they they did okay uh, my pikes are getting 31 as well so nothing special but they forced the units back which is more what they needed to be doing then we have mythic key here with his shock infantry especially cleaning up 369 kills 319 261 doing really really well all really well chevroned up doing very nice his javi is getting 115 kills um, his sword is 119, the best one. His general only getting 17 kills before he broke. Real shame there. Then we have uh, Heads, who's playing as the other army. His uh, his sword is doing okay. 106 kills. His general, 86 kills. His uh, his shock, also doing very well. 256. 194. Very, very nice. His Javi's 115 kills. And his Arty getting 80 kills. So very well done there. Um, so yeah, well done to all of us. Um Doing a Bjorn Ironside and his uh, and, and his uh, and his Viking band proud, and uh, yeah, the Romans who uh, lost today and uh, only only just I will say they were very unlucky. They probably would have won uh, given a bit more time, um, possibly. Who knows? Um, but the uh, like yeah, we got Anasvara here who's playing as one of the armies. Um, he's the developer of this mod as well. So uh, yeah, well done to him for producing this mod. He got 298 kills with his uh, Vrangian guard. He, um, his, like, uh, weaker shock infantry unit getting 157. His crossbow is getting 258. 419 this one got. Wow. His cav getting 102 kills. 
and his Optima Toys, his sword's getting uh, 117. So you have some good kills there. Then we have uh, Crazy Spartan who's playing as uh, another one of the Roman armies. Um, his sword's not doing so well and bringing a much more weaker army, but he did a, a really, like, he held for a long time. But yeah, he uh, his swords did not, like, match up to ours at all. And you can see here, look at this, 90 kills, uh, 73 kills, nothing amazing. His uh, shock doing well, getting 134. His crossbow is 425, insane as well. Then we have Runic here, who sallied out with his cavalry, getting 120 kills before they died. Um, his Varangingar getting 220. His uh, armor Sagittari getting 190 kills. His uh, shock infantry, which he spammed out here, 316, the best one got. Really, really nice. And his pikes getting 66 kills. So, yeah, very well done to him and all of his allies as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, siege battle. It was certainly a fun one to watch and certainly a fun one to play. And, uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for new around here, and a comment to show your support uh, if you did enjoy it. And I'll see you guys in the next battle. Bye for now.